Well, in case you missed the latest development in the Hunter Biden legal saga that is ongoing, an IRS special agent publicly claimed the obvious, that the investigation into president's, the president's troubled son is being mishandled. You don't say. Hmm. This individual now seeking whistleblower protection, something the left won't even entertain. Yet, just a few years back, the same Democratic voices pushed to protect the identity of former President Trump's whistleblower during the hearings to impeach him from office. What agency was this individual from? If I could interject here, we don't want to use these it's proceedings. Our, it's our time, I know, Mr. Chair. but we need to protect the whistleblower. If the witness has a good faith belief that this may reveal the identity of the whistleblower, uh, that is not the purpose that we are here for. Right. Let's protect all whistleblowers, unless, of course, it supports their narrative. Earlier today, I spoke with South Carolina Congresswoman and Oversight Committee member Nancy Mace to discuss the latest example of the Dems double standard. So, Congresswoman, in 2019, during the Trump impeachment hearings, as you just saw, Democrats basically gave the shirt off of their backs to cover for this whistleblower. Now, someone opens their mouth about Hunter Biden, and all of a sudden, you can't say anything. It's an IRS whistleblower, must be, must be prosecuted, must be silenced. There is no protections from the Democrats. What do you say? Right. What's good for the goose is good for the gander in this situation. And for years now, the left has said that no one is above the law. And I physically went and I've seen some of the suspicious activity reports. We've, mm -hmm. we've read reports from the whistleblower and what's going on. This ought to be investigated to the fullest extent of the law. And the American people should know if there's been an injustice that's incurred here. Right. But Congressman, for years, I mean, Hunter Biden, let's just say he's not exactly above board. Okay. Right. <laughs> so right. He, we've got like video evidence of him breaking the law. The, then you've got the gun charge. It's been, I mean, how many years has been in the public light? 20 All years? All swept under the rug. Right. All right. of it. What? And, and I got to say for, for the viewers out there, like what is taking so long to nail him on something? Yeah, it's hard to say. I mean, every time we look under a stone, I, we find a dumpster fire. And this week, because I was over at the Department of Treasury with other oversight members, I was labeled a conspiracy theorist by reporting on what we witnessed in the suspicious activity reports from shell companies to uh, multiple Biden family members, more than we ever thought possible. Nine. Right. And the amount of money that we're talking about with these shell companies where the source of funds is unknown, where it's going is unknown, and why it was being paid off. The numbers are astronomical. And it, we should be asking questions. It should be a nonpartisan mm -hmm. issue, but instead, because it's President Biden and it's his family, they don't want to investigate it. So they're hypocritical on investigating anyone that they think that people are above the law if you're on the left side of the aisle. So uh, how much money are you? Are we talking about here? Because that, that total number hasn't really been disclosed. Mm -hmm. How much money is transferred via Bidens to other Bidens mixed in with whatever I can, else? I can tell you. Well, I can't get into specifics because the information is confidential, but I sure. will tell you on the prostitution ring allegations that... I read about in black and white and saw that in the suspicious, suspicious activity reports. That was a multi-million dollar SAR, okay? That was just one of 170 reports that we had at our, at our disposal on Monday to look at and review, and there were over 170. And we only requested the suspicious activity reports for two Biden family members. Come to find out, there are nine. So no one knows yet how many more suspicious activity reports we need to review, bank records, et cetera, to follow the money. And then when you look at the White House records, and you see that this was a revolving door between Vice President Biden and Hunter Biden's mm -hmm. colleagues or clients or people that were paying right. him gobs of money, China, Russia, Ukraine, all these places. Um, and when you look and you see those connections and you connect the dots, you wonder why this has not been fully investigated. Right. But if I Venmo you $600, I'll get it. Oh, the IRS <laughs> is coming for you, exactly. right? Yeah. Unbelievable. Uh, real quick, I got about a minute left. You've been front and center on the, uh, the uh, let's call it, I mean, this is Title IX protections. You have said, yeah. I don't think men should be competing against women. I, I mean, who has a problem with this? Right, absolutely no one except for the far left. I mean, we were called, Republicans were called insidious yesterday. I was called insidious yesterday for supporting an opposition, a ban on men and women's sports. And I had an amendment on that bill called the Riley Gaines Report. Riley um, had to compete against a biological man, lost opportunities and medals because of it. But they also forced her to share a locker room. 
with a biological man. And there, I mean, nobody's for this sort of thing. And I'm a girl mom. I've got a young girl. She's an athlete. I would be horrified mm -hmm. if that's what my daughter had to go through as a young woman. And women are already vulnerable before they ever step into the locker room. And now it, the tables are turned. Republicans are the feminists now. Yeah. Imagine that. It was just sort of wild how it's changed yeah. so quickly. I have a 10 year old daughter and I can't imagine how I'm going to react if that happens to her. Yeah. Uh, Congresswoman Nancy Mace, we appreciate yeah. you coming in. Thank you. Thank you very much.